the Calgary Comic and Entertainment Expo. And I don't have to shout anymore. Hurrah! All right, well, um, uh, yeah, you really don't need any introduction to this fabulous gentleman. And as with the last panel that I was here, we just really want to get going and get this conversation going. So please, welcome to the stage, Mr. Sean Astin. <laughs> Cooler than the stadium. <laughs> I mean, you guys, that is a, uh, let me count how many people. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I brought posters. I brought five, five posters. <laughs> but I can't think of a good method of selection. <laughs> I know. I'll, be, I'll think about it as we go. But, uh, but I, and I brought a pen and we can, what'd you say? Do the I seats somebody, have numbers? Rudy, you said Rudy. No, they're the Lord of the Rings. Do the Thanks, seats please. have numbers? We could pick random seat numbers. Uh, no, I'll think about it. Go ahead, let's do, uh, let's, let's, um, let's share about God and the world and everything. Let and us the begin. nice weather out there. Hold on, I'm going to take my jacket off. You having a good time here? Hey, bands? I don't know, yeah. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> 24 bucks from the Gap. Yeah, <laughs> this is Middle Earth Exposed, happening right here. Da -da -da. Okay. <laughs> this is like my hotel room. <laughs> Okay. So, um, Sean. Yeah. I wanted to start by asking you, yeah. if I may. My old friend. In the yes. My opera friend. Stop it. <laughs> the opera last singer. time I saw Sean, he made me sing for him. So that's that's what. Uh, that I'm not going to make you sing this no, time. Absolutely not. I'm um, not going to make you sing stop, this stop time. Stop it. No. I'm not no. going to. I'm not going to ask. No. I'm not going to no. say. No. I'm going to cheer really loud. It's not about me. If I really it's want you to me. sing. Stop it. Anyway. Carry on. So, in the uh, extended edition of Unexpected she gets Journey, paid to do it. yeah, you have. I, I'm not getting paid enough this weekend for singing. Um, in the extended edition of Unexpected Journey, we had the great pleasure of seeing you back in the Shire, being a Hobbit again. What was? It? Yeah, really, really. Check it out if you have missed that moment. Unexpected Journey, extended edition, when Bilbo goes and buys his fish in the market in Hobbiton after the encounter with Gandalf. Sharp-eyed, you will notice a Mr. Sean Astin being a hobbit in the, in the Shire there. What was it like going back after all those years and being back in Middle Earth? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> I was? <laughs> What, well, what is it like when you go back to New Zealand? I was still going on about the Eagles. I wasn't paying attention to the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, do I, well, I don't know. I don't, was that me? I think you're, you're confusing me with, um, with uh, uh, Proud Feet or whatever. With, uh, with, <laughs> no, really, I, was, I, don't, I, think that wasn't, I think that wasn't me. Really? Really, I promise. Well, the studio said it was. They didn't pay me. <laughs> <laughs> they but CGI'd there's nothing new there. there. Uh, uh, they just CGI'd you in there. Might, maybe something. Well, that's bizarre. I don't remember it, yeah. We'll have to have a look together. Oh my gosh. Somebody pull it up on their phone. It's very odd. I'm we going to be so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, sure I have to re answer all the what would, you know, are you a part of the Hobbit questions? Right. <laughs> Go back in time. It was wonderful. It was amazing to be back in New Zealand with all my friends and family. And <laughs> this isn't true. <laughs> but it would be. It would be true. It would be true. Just do you not go true. back to New Zealand? I went back to do uh, Hercules. I went back to do Hercules, a, uh, a, homey, a Hallmark um, uh, mini miniseries, and, and I played Linus, Hercules' Samwise. And, um, <laughs> yeah, only I played the liar. But anyhow, um, yeah, so we, I was there for four months, and it was uh, in Auckland, which is like being in another country sometimes from Wellington and, and down south and whatnot. But, um, but it was amazing because I would see a lot of, a lot of our friends, a lot of the, uh, like Sean Foote, who was the, um, how many were in the thing yesterday? <laughs> All right, I shall quest to be original. Um, 
So, but yeah, he, uh, he, he Sean Foote, who worked on my feet all those years, and and uh, and others, Tammy, and so someone uh, called Sean Foote worked worked on your feet. <laughs> Seriously? Why, yes, he did, <laughs> and he was a uh, he was a surfer and. Um, just a really, it's funny, the Weta guys, if you were going to do that job for an extended period of time, and they would cycle people out because after four or five months of, you know, working on the same blending seams on the same feet and getting the same hair glued on, you know, you start to lose your mind. Um, so they would kind of cycle them out and put them on something that had a, a different flavor and then they'd, they'd come back in. So, you know, for, for us, you, you just head down, marching forward, doing the movie, and different people would come into your... Uh, frame of reference and, and Sean Foote was this kind of zen, calm, really easy at the end of a long day when he's taking your feet off, just g great guy to talk to. <laughs> you guys know that, I mean you know how it works, you know how it works. It was cuts and scrapes and they got to use alcohol in the cuts and scrapes to get the glue off, but then at the end of the day, after that was done, a menthol bath because they had to keep the artist's feet from dissolving or something. <laughs> um, yeah, so Sean Foote was my foot guy. Pretty funny. Um, yeah, we, uh, yeah, so getting to see, being in, in Auckland and seeing them, and um, I had my book come out when I was there too, the uh, There and Back Again, An Actor's Tale. And, Just uh, a great book, great book. Thank you. Um, I don't really think I've ever talked about it very much since uh, since it first came out. And I did the, the the publicity tour for St. Martin's Press, who put it out, and and um, yeah, I don't I don't really ever talk about it. But when you ask what was it like being back there, I knew that it sort of made some publicity because I I talked about it and because I was because the book came out and whatnot. So um, what I like yeah. about your book is um, how much insight it gives into what it's like being in the business. Yeah, and it's a book that I've always said to. Um, young actors, singers that I've worked with is, you know, read this. It's a good insight into what it's like living the sort of day to day, getting up and doing the job and dealing with that and everything that goes with it. And, you know, yeah, I mean, I I yeah, we when you're doing publicity for a movie, it's like an open house. You focus on all the amazing things, all the great things, all the positive things. You want to cast it in the best possible light. And uh, and it was easy to do that with Lord of the Rings because it was the greatest professional and personal experience you could ever hope for in your life. Um, but part of what made it extraordinary was the fact that it was really, really hard. And so after three years of doing the open house, I felt like I had all these other things in there that I just wanted to kind of be a part of the historical record. I mean, if you, if you looked at all the newspapers where we did, uh, you know, interviews, or if you, if you I don't know how many four gig hard drive, four terabyte hard drives you'd fill up with all the, the, the interviews that we did. And I just thought, you know what, there's some, th it was really hard for me. I, I sort of joked about the money thing, but the money thing was a real issue. You know, I mean, uh, it's just one thing that everybody's curious about, but nobody talks about. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about what it felt like. And, and because, like you say, um, I felt like all this anxiety that I had, and I had, probably more anxiety than anybody else on the film that wasn't undergoing major like makeup related drama like John Reese davies had his the boils and awful things that went wrong with his face with the makeup over time and and other people had serious issues but but for me they were kind of psychological issues there were monetary issues and uh, and and kind of other things that I that I carried as my kind of burden and I said the other day if I could go back and do anything different I would just tell myself to relax like it doesn't that none of that None of that matters. But at the point that I wrote that book, it did matter. And I felt like I was holding on to all these thoughts. Every conversation with every agent, every uh, meeting, every, you know, I'm just thinking about the, the short film that I did that got nominated for an Oscar and that that was the result of a huge Encino Man negotiation where I didn't want to be in that movie. And like all these, I can't remember anything now. The, se the second I finished the galleys on that book, it was like something just went whoosh, and my brain just got vacuum sucked out of my head and, and, uh, and now I can't remember anything. I mean, you know, I'm lucky I can still remember my lines when I'm shooting, but, but, um, but, I, but that to me, it's not in any way a comprehensive anything about anything. It's just a, a, a dumping of my thoughts about my career, basically. And I thought that the 
people, the only people really that it's meaningful for are up and coming actors because right. you, you, there's like a, ho you know, it's, it's sort of a Hollywood story. My parents are famous actors. I was very successful at a young age. Everybody wants to know how I stayed so normal and, and so grounded. And, you know, I've got, I've, I've been married 22 years and I've got three kids and I'm, you know, so there's like this side of me, but I, but I also have this, this kind of showbiz side that I've cloaked for a long time. And, uh, and I think kids who look at it when they see, like, it doesn't matter if you start in Goonies, which is a $100 million success story movie. Hey, you guys. You guys want to hear some news about the, uh, the sequel? Yeah. Me too. <laughs> see what I did there? I just kind of set them up, pick, lift them up, and then trash, crash them right down again. Um, in the palm of my hand. <laughs> Anyhow, okay. go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, it, it's, that's the great thing about the book, is that it lets us know that even someone in your position deals with those issues, deals with those anxieties, concerns, problems, and it's very reassuring to anyone starting out in the business to go, oh, it's not just me. Yeah, and it, it's, it's shocking. You know, you look at um, uh, paparazzi, um, who I think should be lined up and with air paint sprayers shot in the face. <laughs> so that they're not killed, but that um, their vision is altered a little bit. Um, because, and I get on with them fine, personally. I mean, they, they're, they're there at the airport, which is, you know, should be a criminal act because, I mean, somebody from the airline disclosed where you were traveling from and to. And there's this, this kind of feeling in the public that, well, you know, if you're a celebrity, then, you know, you, you knew the job was dangerous when you took it. And uh, I get sort of violently angry when I think about that, because I think there's a despair. If somebody gets murdered, it's awful. But at least you know that murder is illegal. Here, there's an injustice happening, and there's no redress for it. And the, and the attitude from the public, the people who love you, who buy your movies, who watch your shows, who, who take you into their hearts, have this kind of callous disregard for the impact that it has on you and your family. And, and, and it's just, it just kind of you know, perpetuates. So, but people sort of assume that if you're an actor in a, in a movie that's a hit movie, you must have a lot of money. When I tell in the book the sum that I got paid for Lord of the Rings, people are shocked. My actor friends cannot believe how, I mean, it's more than, you know, a teacher makes. It's more than a firefighter makes. It's more than a soldier makes. So, in that sense, it's you know, you're lucky to have this opportunity to be able to give your, give your life to something that's, that has such an impact on so many people. But then, you know, just take a second, if my kid's in school, you know, there's like, there's, there's practical things. There's practical things that you think about. There's, you know, taxes, a high tax bracket. There's agents and managers and publicists and business managers and, and, and a whole lot of other people who all take money off the top. So you're lucky if you're making, you know, 30 cents on the dollar. So, you know, it's, it's kind of a downer to talk about that, but if you really want to know, like, what it's like, lift, take the rose-colored glasses off for a second, stick your head through the screen, and wonder what all the different people are making. In fact, it actually makes it all that more extraordinary, because what you have is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people who are willing to work because they truly love something, and work their finger to the bone. It's non-union. It's a non-union experience, which, I don't know, Canada, probably not as big a deal, but, but, uh... So they share, these are people who share the passion that, like, everybody yeah. here, everybody here who, you know, spends their income to cosplay, to come to conventions and all of Autographs. that. We, we know what that's like. We share, we do it for the love and the passion of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So that's all. I mean, I, that book was just a way for me to, and then I talk about craft. I talk about moments, um, a kind of... Um, chronology of, of which is sort of a journey of my, my technical and, and emotional life as an actor and how you people want to know they always used to ask me they don't seem to ask so much more since you play Sam everybody just assumes you can cry at the drop of a hat huh. but uh, but uh, but I, I definitely um, you know there are certain moments in my life and career where we're crying on camera we're, 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 we're acting we're you know the craft it becomes where you get redevelop it. My mother taught me, you know, my first lesson in crying was on a ABC, uh, ABC after school special called Please Don't Hit Me Mom. <laughs> Thank you. I show clips from it and everybody gets really serious. I'm like, no, no, I know it's child abuse, but it's funny. Uh, <laughs> so, 
So my mom, uh, I was eight, and my mom basically got me the part in this show, of the, a show about an abusive mother and the abuse, abused child, and it was like just handing me a, a career on a silver platter. I had to audition for it, but it was, it was a lock that I was going to get it, and because um, they wanted my mom really badly, and I was cute. And um, I was. Uh, nothing's, oh. A little has changed, a little has, I have cute kids now, so that's okay. But, the, um, but basically, so we're on the set, and my mom, my mom is a very famous bipolar sufferer. So she's written best-selling books and given speeches all over the world about uh, manic depression and, and that kind of stuff. So, so uh, people know it's, it's at, at her choosing that we sort of had an extraordinary life in my family, but also, you know, a lot of drama, too, and abuse and that kind of stuff. So, uh, so here we are, we go to work, and there's scenes where she's got to be beating me up. So, you know, I remember they, there was one scene in the kitchen where she's, she's screaming at me and she's shaking me like this, and a, a dish breaks on the ground, and, and they would say, okay, and action. And she would start hitting me, and I'd start laughing. Because it was so uncomfortable, you know, and I, and, and I, I, w I didn't know what to do. So she, and it was like five, six, seven takes later, uh, not in the digital age, those takes, every take meant money, you know. So uh, my mom says, just give us a minute. And we go around this side in the hallway of the house we're shooting in. She goes, Sean, I took a chance on you. This is my professional career. You are jeopardizing everything. Now you will go in there and you will do what you're supposed to do. <laughs> I I start sobbing, right? So then she's like, rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> she's like, you, no, 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 no. I cut, and the director's like, that was amazing, that was amazing. And I'm, so my mom's like, honey, that's acting. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, God. Always want to please, you know? So in the book, I talk about these other little, these moments, and, and, um, and Lord of the Rings, there was... The, being on the side of Mount Ropehu in the uh, uh, Mordor um, moment with, with, with Frodo and, you know, it's like, it'll be springtime soon and birds will be nesting in the hazel thickets and it'll, they'll be sowing the first of the uh, barley and eating the first of the strawberries and cream and that whole thing. And uh, whew, it was so easy to cry. It was another, like, wa just moment of discovery for me where just looking at Elijah and knowing that Peter was over there and being on this volcano, active volcano that would belch every couple hours and you'd smell the sulfur and, and just knowing that you were part of something that was going to affect so many people and so just, you know, just such an opening of your soul and just sobbing and, and having to get the words right and needing to, needing to uh, control it so that you could, you could, you know, honor Tolkien's uh, poetry. And, and then Peter coming around from the side of the monitor and uh, with tears streaming down his face and just looking at that and having this simultaneous like high five with God <laughs> and, uh, and, and then just a, an even d deeper kind of awakening and sense of it until it was finally dark and they were like carrying the equipment off the mountain and <laughs> I'm still there wanting to cry and do, you know, with Frodo. <laughs> so, uh, so the book just kind of chronicles a little bit of that, but anyhow. Let's take a couple of questions from the audience. I see a hand went up right there immediately, lady in the blue top. By the way, I recognize everybody who's that signed. I see everybody, but go ahead. That's a great question. Great question. Uh, question for those of you who didn't hear, the question was, um, you know, the books, it seems from the way I'm talking about the book that it gave me a sense of release and closure and, and stuff about my feelings, which is sort of true, but then wondering what I do now in my life and career. So really, that still felt like a sense of mission. I still felt a little kind of not, not centered. And I didn't really give a comprehensive experience about Lord of the Rings at all. So it, it had a picture of me as Sam on it, but it came out and I didn't want to send it to people in the, in the movie. I didn't feel like it was, it, it, was, it was a weird tangential kind of thing. You know, New Line sent us at the very beginning of the, um, 
of the, uh, I don't know if this is interesting to you guys, but it, to me, I never talk about this, but, but um, when we signed the contract to do it, the contract was long, it was like buying a house, you know, and they had these non-disclosure agreements and they had all the stuff involved with it. And one of the things it was, was like they, they um, I can't remember exactly how you phrase it, they phrased it, but I remember calling my attorney and saying, you know, I'll keep the secrets of, this, of the movie you know, because it's like a magic trick. It's it's very special. The the look of things, how things are done. You know, never mind that it would be 15 years of everybody knowing how every single thing was done, every second of the thing. But but um, <laughs> but but I'll keep the secret. But my thoughts are my own. My experience is my own. New Line is not going to own me. They're not. This isn't like 1950s Hollywood where you sign a contract with people and you're indebted to them. Like you know, I, I'm not going to do that. So, and he got it so that the language was fine. But then we got down to New Zealand and somebody from the publicity department had the very beautiful idea of sending us all these gorgeous leather bound journals. And they were like, listen, we just want you to, you know, keep track of, you know, if, if any, any drawing or anything, keeping pictures, or we just want you to know that we think it's a great idea for doing that and if you want to share it with us. That journal sits empty in a box in my garage to this day. Cause I'm like, there's no way that that New Line Cinema, never mind my own personal like interpreting my experience, like Orlando took a picture of the day every day, so he's got this incredible book of photographs from all over New Zealand, and you're like, wow, that's pretty great, <laughs> that's pretty great. But, uh, but I, I was sort of like cognitive dissonance with that, and, um, and so the book w was, uh, w was, was just kind of like an, like an answer to that thought. I, sh I just knew I could sell it. I, I, it, I worked with a collaborator, Joe Layden, who did a great job. He was having a tough family life and the experience, and so he wasn't, the, the book was, you know, the book is a product of a, a really weird time, but, um, but that's it. It almost, it almost felt like a, uh, just like a side thing. And I love that people come up and they say, I've signed it all day today, and it means something to people, and that's great. But it wasn't a sense of closure relief for me. I, didn't, I think people didn't like it that much in the, in the orbit of Lord of the Rings. So. But today, I'm a runner. I ran three marathons last year, LA, San Francisco, and Chicago. Yeah. So that is, uh, I got hurt. I pulled a, a tore a hamstring in, uh, in, at the end of like mile 18 in Chicago and I've, I've been really, really struggling to get back into the game and, uh, uh, which is, it's, it affects everything. It's my, it's my self, uh, uh, you know, self medication for just my own brain chemistry. And, and when I'm running, life is, everybody around me is like, mm, he's good, he's running. And you can look, like last year, I've got this movie coming out called Mom's Night Out on May 9th, which is gonna be fantastic. It's gonna do really, really well. Sarah Drew from um, Grey's Anatomy and I play uh, husband and wife, and it's about you know, a mom who finally realizes she needs to take a couple hours for herself with her friends and you know, hilarity ensues when dad tries to watch the kids and nothing goes right on their date and it's, it's a sweet family film and, and uh, but I was, I was like really, really skinny, like sk skinny, <laughs> proper skinny, juicing, hired a chef to, uh, on location to like make this vegan endurance food for me and, uh, and then I get hurt and it's like, all right, I have some more roast beef, you know, <laughs> that's cool, all of the Hobbit comes back out, you know. <laughs> So, uh, so anyway, so running is my, is definitely my thing. And, 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 uh, I don't know if you guys know about run third. There's so many people I should answer the questions faster. <laughs> I see a question here, a lady in a sort of greeny turquoise top had her hand up for ages. No, none of my, uh, Middle Eastern films though. You haven't, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, bless you. Well, that's the, that's the question that my, when my daughter Allie, who played Eleanor in the last movie, did I ever think she would go into acting? And, and um, huh, now she is kind of weighted 4.3 GPA. She scores like, uh, what is it, 2400 is the best you can get on the SATs? And she gets like a 2200 and she doesn't paint, she doesn't study for it. And she's just like <laughs> off that she's smart. She just sang in front of a few thousand people um, uh, at, the, at the school, at the church connected to her school. and. Uh, she, she trained now in, in uh, not like you, but, uh, but with her voice, and and she um, she's mock trial. She's the lead attorney on, uh, for the prosecution on mock trial. She's 
uh, just the plays. She does. She's she a head cheerleader. Make varsity cheer like in the her second year. I mean, she's just like, and all she wants to do is act. <laughs> so and and for a while, I would I would encourage it, and then I would kind of try and shape her other ways depending on how I felt she was doing at a given time. But uh, she demonstrated to me a few years ago by reading a stack of books on theater and drama that I gave her and by watching a bunch of, I was really worried about her identity. And, and uh, but you know, she's, she is who she is and you, you'll be seeing her. She plays, we, we both, uh, Ribbit. I have a, an animated feature coming out called Ribbit about a poison tree frog. And uh, so he can't have friends because he would kill them. But all he believes he's destined for something more, and he knows that he's supposed to kiss a princess, and, and something is supposed to happen. And so at the end of the story, Allie plays the voice of the princess who kisses him. Aww. So Aww. that's coming out. Uh, that's coming out soon. Anyway, more. I see uh, Arwen over here is is waving at us to ask a question. Yeah. Uh, the funniest, funniest thing. Funniest thing that happened during Lord of the Rings. <laughs> well, I told the I told one story, so I don't want to tell this about Andy Serkis and, and me. Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 It wasn't funny at the time. <laughs> so so we, we've, we've got like a minute. One minute left. <gasps> I know. One, I of, know, the, one of the fellowship put um, something that you shouldn't put on the doorstep of one of the other... <laughs> trailer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure it had to do with Orly and Vigo, and I don't know who did it. If it was Vigo, it would have been like you know any other day. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's one thing that pops into mind. Oh, can we do a speed round? <clears throat> Uh, I think we have to wrap. I think, you know, yeah, sadly. It's, it's yeah, quick, you know. this is my favorite thing is a quick speed round. I'll point to a bunch of people, you ask questions, I'll give a racing answer to it, several of them, and then we'll go. All right. So up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What is your favorite line that that What's my favorite line? Potatoes? I don't know. That's it. <laughs> it's not. It's really not. But okay, yeah. Yeah. My favorite run? Organized? Your favorite run? Yeah. My favorite run. Oh, I'll right, think about that for a second. Yeah. What was it like working on Rudy? It hurt. <laughs> they hit hard, but I took those pictures of my bruises all over my body, and I, I put them on the mantelpiece, and people would come over, and I'd be like, "Did you see the bruises I got?" Well, <laughs> yeah, quick, quick, quick. Favorite role? I played. Uh, uh, well, I usually say Two Flower in Terry Pratchett's Color Magic, but <laughs> lately I've been saying I can't remember where I played, whether I played Frick or Frack. But Ethan Embry and I played Frick and Frack in uh, Billy uh, uh, Billy's um, uh, Witches of uh, Witches of Oz, and my favorite line I've ever uttered out loud in the history of my entire career was on that movie. I run the LA Marathon and and then took a red eye to get to uh, Connecticut where we were filming it. Got to you know I could barely walk. We get to the stage. They put my elf ears and the toe things on there, and Ethan Embry and I, we sit down there, and we're supposed to, any time the mention of Dorothy comes up, it, we, we're sort of emissaries from, uh, from the witch, so we don't like it. So they, the guy comes in, he starts saying it, we're, we're saying, please, you know, stop, 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 and finally I go, please don't say her name! <laughs> my favorite line I've ever uttered. Okay, we're going to have to go. Look at that, they're, they're dimming the lights. They're dimming the lights. What are you doing with the posters, Sean? Say again? What are you doing with the posters? Uh, I'm gonna give them to people that I choose at random right now. All right, awesome. <laughs>